Hello all, uh, my name is Varun. I currently work as the Dean. I was a developer earlier, worked on different technologies. Uh, this video is being made assuming that you have your exams probably next couple of days. And uh, this video discusses about the five units uh, for AKNU or the Nanaya University, which deals with data science and predominantly R language, right? And again, you know, this is a very quick video. As I said, it is with an assumption that you have your exam in next one or two days. And this is just a quick refresher of the different units that you have. Probably not more than 15 to 20 minutes each. And uh, just to give you a quick uh, you know, revision of each of the topics that we have. But firstly, all the best to everyone who's doing this uh, tomorrow. Take your time uh, to write. Be very uh, cautious when you are choosing words and terminologies. And one piece of advice that I really would love to give to all of you is try to use images or a, or a picto, a pictorial representation wherever possible. That would only make your answer look better and would you know give a very good understanding to the investigator that, okay, this person knows what he's doing. Anyways, now without uh, too many advices, I would like to quickly get to uh, the uh, subject wherein we discuss about, uh, you know, what we have. Again, uh, just to give you an idea of what your uh, subject is, the name of the subject is Introduction to Data Science and R Programming. Okay. Now, in this, the first unit that you have is uh, Defining Data Science and Big Data, Benefits on, uh, and Uses, Facets, Data Science Process, History and Overview of R, which is a tool uh, getting started with R and nuts and bolts. Yeah, so this is for Adikavi Nanaya University. Right, so now let us begin understanding each of these. So firstly, we'll start with a very uh, basic understanding as to what is uh, data science probably. I think this image is a real good image for us to understand at a very basic level, or we could take the help of this image too. So when you talk of data science in this, you have involvement of computer science, data processing, domain expertise, statistical research, mathematics, and different languages that get involved. All these to work on this platform or work towards this platform called data science. But at the end of the day, what does data science do? What is it? According to me, in my opinion, it is, you know, finally the, uh, the uh, I mean, the output that you get or the way of usage is advanced statistical computing. You are using high level statistics to be able to generate the output and probably meet the needs or requirements of today's generation, right? Now, your first unit also encompasses of what is big data. Now, when we talk of big data, big data is a very huge topic, but we'll just keep it short. Earlier, uh, you know, uh, there was a different process that used to get into structure when you wanted to store or retrieve data. But now with big data, it, it, it is like all problems have been fixed. It's like one solution for all your problems. Now, why does big data have that kind of a hype? Now, when we talk of big data, in big data, you have this concept of eight Vs. Eight Vs talks about the volume, variety, value, velocity, veracity. There are some more. But when you talk about each of these, you, you would be able to understand that you can use different formats of data, different types of data. The data can be of any size. There can be any number of inconsistencies and the data and irrespective of all these, your big data would still give you a very super fast performance. Now beat this. Is there anything else that anyone would be looking for when you're working on a technology? At least I think it satisfies most of your requirements, right? So uh, again, there are different types of data that big data can handle, but we'll get into this probably, you know, as we go further. So now that you have understood what are the eight Vs, volume, velocity, the speed, variety, it can take in images, Excel files, that, this, anything. Then you have vocabulary. I mean, different words can be understood uh, by the system. Then you have vagueness. Vague is something which is not very easy or straightforward to understand. 
the viability, and finally the value. Okay, so in any project or every project you do, it only adds value to it by removing obstacles or by making it easier for you or for your client to understand and operate on that platform. As simple, okay. But then it's not as simple as you know said. There is at you know obviously a lot of technology that goes behind the screen, but at a basic level, I think this should be enough. Now we've already understood what is data science. It is being able to compute, uh, you know, compute massive amounts of data with advanced statistical technologies. And we use things right from computer science to statistics to, you know, different languages, to different tools, to different frameworks, right? For example, as you can see, Hadoop, Pig, Spark, R, Python, Java are a few of these. There are still many uh, languages that are missing, you know, according to me, like you don't have SQL. So yeah, a lot of things together make data science. Now, every language or a technology or a framework always has a disadvantage and advantage. I mean, there's no language that goes away only with advantages and there's no disadvantage. That's not possible, right? So keeping that in mind, we all know that data science, I mean, we all hear that data science is booming. It's, you know, coming up this you know highly paid career all this is for a cause and that cause is to be able to compute or crunch this kind of a data within the time needed and to be able to give an analysis on top of it but even this has disadvantages like privacy or probably sometimes the 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 result may not be as desired or it's very difficult for one person to learn the whole subject or to be able to master the field of data science because it's an ocean so yes, there would be some challenges and some roadblocks that you would be stumbling across. Now, different types of data. So we all know that when you're working with data science or any uh, you know, technology or language for that case, there are different types of data you handle. I mean, it's not only Excel sheets always. You have images, you have Excel, or you have Word. You have computations, you have tables, you have videos, you have audio, all these fall into the category of data. So now when you check what are the different facets of data, you can uh, here see, uh, okay, I don't think that's a good uh, thing for me to pull out, but Okay, I think we'll check with the word types of data just to keep things simple right now. Okay, so okay, we'll go back to facets. Types is probably taking us into you know deep into statistics. But okay, so here as you can understand, you have you know different types of uh you know data that work. So you have structured, unstructured, natural language, machine generated, graph based, audio, video, streaming, etc. Okay. Now, what are these? So if you look at each of these, so firstly, structured is where you have your, uh, you know, okay, I'll, I'll probably, you know, definitely would love to give you an image of structured versus unstructured. Oh, wow. So here you have structured data and this is an example of your unstructured data just one step ahead is where you would be able to understand the difference between structured semi-structured and unstructured so basically the arrangement patterns differ the disturbance within the data gets higher within each of these that's all that you know is different now when you try to understand each of these structured is quantitative unstructured is qualitative for structured data, uh, data warehouses and relational databases are used, but for unstructured data, you use data lakes and non-RDBMS, okay? Structured is completely factual, organized, it's to the point, while unstructured is not. Like any kind of an image or an audio can be categorized as unstructured, okay? So these are uh, the differences. Then you have natural language, uh, whatever you talk nowadays to Siri or Alexa or probably all these devices, Google chat, they're all part of NLP, wherein it's trying to understand what you're saying. There is sentiment analysis. There is so many things, you know, a, a very basic example is text to speech converter. You talk something to a device, it, all, it, it types things automatically. That's all thanks to NLP. 
machine generated data every information that you have generated by a hospital is a machine generated data i i i'm pretty sure we all know that by now or probably when you make a call uh, and if you have a post paid sim then you would be getting a monthly bill of what all calls you've made that is a machine generated data then you have graph based information you might have seen how youtube or google analytics work or instagram analytics you check that's all graph based information audio images and video this is what we primarily send or receive on instagram whatsapp twitter yeah i mean all the new tech or the new age platforms are primarily used for these then streaming data you can talk about netflix or amazon or probably any of these uh, hotstar all of these streaming platforms that you have youtube this is an example now we'll understand uh, the next topic that is what is a data science process so data science process primarily consists of okay again i would like to take a good image as an example before i start off so as you can see i have collection of data first day i would be taking the data understanding what it has to be i mean what needs to be done with it then i'll try to clean it to the best of my capabilities then i'll be understanding insights from the data moving on to building a model check the model and deploy the model this is how we work with any kind of a data uh, set that you have okay and this is also the process for any uh, you know uh, data science project again please understand that different languages have different processes that are undertaken but this is with regards to data science so firstly you will be understanding what is your goal after that you will be making steps towards collecting the data then you will be preparing the data preparation includes cleaning the data transformation of data or removing unnecessary information then you would be doing eda eda is deep statistics wherein you'll be working on the you know the proper part of statistics then you have data modeling you'll be building a machine learning model and finally you'll be presenting this to your manager or client or whoever needs it which is actually one of the reason why presentation which is communication is very important for a data scientist finally we are moving into the tool this is the favorite part of my uh, this is i mean this is my favorite part within the entire unit where we are discussing about r so i hope you all know by now that r is a statistical language which uh, uh, or a tool which was developed for statisticians by statisticians okay this is not an indian or an asian tool this tool was developed in america uh, by a few people this was not an individual effort this was done by a few people and they were also awarded a very famous acm software system award and the entire uh, you know prize money for this award in in those days which was 10000 us dollars was given to uh, the statistical association and they have developed this tool initially with fortran libraries later c and c++ came into being uh, to you know develop this language or this tool further and then uh, we see the evolution of what we have today and just a quick you know fun fact r was named s initially and for some reason it was again uh, you know uh, put back to r and we now know it as one of the best interactive data analysis tool for statisticians or for mathematicians and the last topic which talks about uh, you know the features there are many features of r which is the reason why it's famous it's open source you can use it for free uh, it's got really good uh, graphing uh, graph capabilities or graphical capabilities um, good community support a wide range of packages or libraries you have as many as 10000 libraries from all different fields like uh, biology zoology astronomy medicine that this you name it you have it uh then it can work on really statistical uh, like complex statistical challenges or calculations i've suffered that myself it, it it can be used for distributed computing because of which 
multiple processing can keep happening you don't have to like break on the time or the efficiency to be able to deliver your project you can run code without a compiler the best part is it's an interpreted language so it just goes on uh, it has interfacing capabilities with different databases like sql oracle mysql etc it can work with machine learning i am hoping that very soon you'll be very easily uh, you know be able to work on deep learning too data wrangling which involves complex data cleaning transformation all those can be done pretty easily it provides you an amazing cross platform support that is it can work on different platforms and connect to different operating systems very easily be it mac mac linux windows or any other thing it works it's compatible with many programming languages like C, C++, uh, Java, .NET, Python. I mean, that summarizes a lot, right? Finally, it's got really good data handling and storage capabilities. There may be, you know, more advantages if you or, or features if you keep digging deep into it. But I think from an exam perspective, if you're writing 15 points and explaining them, assuming that the question is for 10 marks, I think that will do great justice. Finally, you have nuts and bolts of R. This is basically the explanation of your R screen. Now, please understand that it's made of four parts. I'm pretty sure you all know this by now. First is the source, console, your environment, and finally, a multiple tabbed uh, you know, window. We'll talk about it. So the first one is the source, wherein you write your actual code. The second is console, which is your scratch pad or your rough work area, wherein you can do your calculations, but you don't have to save it. Once you believe that the calculation made is correct and is giving you the desired answer, you may want to place it at the top. Then you have your environment and history. This stores steps of, uh, you know, the recent steps or the recent calculations that you've made using R. In the history and environment gives you a record of all the variables that you've created or the data frames you've created. So you can go and check which variable or which data frame has what. You would also be able to work on different types of plots or libraries or take help from the last uh, the last tab or from the last window. Uh, help gives you a quick reference of different functions or libraries that you're stuck with. Packages can help you download any library and plots is for visualization. So I guess with that, you should be able to now go and nail your uh, unit uh, one uh, questions and answers, be it 10 marker or five marker. I'm sure you should be able to, you know, uh, nail it hard. Do well. Uh, and uh, you would also be able to find unit two, three, four, and five in the playlist uh, available. Uh, all the best. And if there's any queries, uh, not just with regards to the exam, feel free to write it in the comment section and I'll be answering them at my earliest best. All the best, everyone. Uh, do pass this with your friends who you believe may need this for their examination tomorrow. That's my 20 minutes for now. Probably plus or minus 20 minutes. Thank you all. Best wishes.